Om Namo Bhagavate Sri Arana Chala Ramanaya uh, Namaskaram. Today I'm going to talk about um, something that Bhagavan often used to say, namely Bhakti is the mother of Jnana. If we think about it, the reason for this is um, is very clear. That is, Jnana is nothing but the complete annihilation of ego. In other words, it is complete self-surrender. It is surrender of ourself entirely. So, in order to be willing to surrender ourself entirely, we must have supreme love. Without supreme love, we will we will not be willing to surrender ourselves. So love is absolutely the key. Love means bhakti. Bhakti is absolutely the key to um, following this path and to the final goal of complete surrender. Um, <clears throat> that, that is, in order to surrender ourselves, we must be willing to give up everything. As Bhagavan says, for example, in verse 26 of Uludunapadu, Ahandayundayin anetumundahum. If ego comes into existence, everything comes into existence. Ahandayindrail indru anetum. If ego doesn't exist, everything doesn't exist. Ahandayayabamam. Ego itself is everything. Adalal yadue du endru nadale ovadal yabamena o. Therefore, know that investigating what this is is giving up everything. So even to investigate what this ego is, even to investigate and find out what we actually are and thereby annihilate this ego, we must be willing to give up everything. Um, because everything depends for its semi-existence upon the semi-existence of ourself as ego. When we give up ego, we give up everything. What then remains, as Bhagavan says in um, verse 28 of Upadesha Undia, um, if one knows what the real nature of oneself is, then anadi, ananta, akanda, satchidananda. That is what we actually are. That is what alone is real. And that is what alone will remain if we annihilate ego. So this requires supreme love. Without that all-consuming love, we will not be willing to surrender ourselves. And therefore we cannot... Well, surrender of ourself is itself jnana. When we, when we as, as ego are surrendered, what remains is the jnana that we actually are. That alone is real. As Bhagavan says in verse 13 of, uh, uh, of Uludunapdu, uh, jnana mam tane me, oneself who is jnana alone is real. That is what we always are, but it's seemingly obstructed by this uh, as our seeming rising as ego. So we must be willing to give up ego, and in order to be willing to give up ego, we have to give up everything. So that requires supreme love. So Bhagavan's path is the ultimate path of bhakti. This is Bhagavan's path is the um, is parabhakti tattva, the, the, the very nature of supreme uh, 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 devotion, supreme love. And what is the key to love? As Bhagavan says in um, in the very first sentence of uh, Nana. Um, in one of the clauses, he says, um, uh, that is, he begins, Sakala jiva galum dukum embedindri epodum sukumai irika virumbadalum. Since all jivas uh, uh, like to be always happy without what is called misery, yavakum tan iditileye parama priyam iripadalum. Uh, since for everyone the greatest love is only for oneself, and then this is the clause I want to emphasize, priyataku sukume karanamadalalam, since happiness alone is the cause of love. So our mind naturally goes towards wherever it thinks happiness lies. If we believe happiness lies in the external world, our mind will be constantly going out towards the external world. So 
in order to have that supreme love to turn back within, we need to have the Viveka to recognize that happiness does not lie outside, it lies only within ourselves. So the very nature of the mind, the very nature of ourself is to be constantly seeking happiness. Why? Because as Bhagavan says later in the same sentence, happiness is our own swabhava, it's what we actually are. And uh, uh, he, he concludes that sentence saying, Manamatra nidreo dinamadu babikam tan mana achukate adeya uh, tane tan aridal vendum. Uh, to attain that happiness, which is one's own nature, uh, which one experiences daily in sleep, which is devoid of the mind, tanaitan aridovendam, oneself knowing oneself is necessary. Adaku nana ennum jnana vicharame mukhya sadhanam. For that, we investigate this jnana vichara, this uh, investigation of awareness called who am I is the mukhya sadhanam, that is the principal means. But for that, the key is love. As Bhagavan says, um, that is without that love, we will not even be willing to, even to try to investigate who am I. So love is absolutely the key. So Bhagavan's path is the, is the very pinnacle of the path of, uh, of devotion. That is the path of devotion, the, the, the highest devotion is, is to give oneself. If one, if, if we really love someone, we don't. We, if 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 our love for someone is is uh, genuine, we don't seek to gain anything from that person. We seek to give to that person. That is, love is about not about taking, but about giving. So, giving ourselves is the highest form of love. So, the pinnacle of the path of bhakti is surrender. And how can we surrender ourselves? without investigating ourselves, because the very nature of ego is to, as Bhagavan says in, uh, in verse 25 of Uladunapadu, uh, that is the very nature of ego is to be, it, it rises, stands and flourishes by grasping things other than itself. That is, ego is a uruvatrape, it's a formless phantom or evil spirit. Um, and uh, uh, <clears throat> urupatri undu. Uh, um, sorry, um, sorry. Uh, u- urupatri undam, g- grasping form, it comes into existence. Urupatri nikam, grasping form, it stands. Urupatri undu mika ongum, grasping and feeding on form, it flourishes abundantly. Uruvitu urupatram, leaving form, it grasps form. So the very nature of ego is to be constantly grasping form. Since ego itself is a formless phantom or evil spirit, the f- whatever forms it grasps, it's uh, things other than itself. So the ego cannot cannot come into existence or stand or flourish without constantly grasping things other than itself. This is why the mind is constantly going outwards. But if instead of going out to grasp things other than itself, if the mind turns back within to find out who am I, what happens to it? As Bhagavan says in that same verse 25, Tedinal otum pidicum. If sought, it takes flight. That is, if the mind, if the outward going attention is turned back within to see who am I, the, the, this ego will take flight. That is, it'll run away. Because it doesn't actually exist. We seem to be ego only so long as we're grasping other things. If we turn back within to see who am I, There's no such thing as ego to be found. All that exists there is the infinite, pure awareness that we actually are. Uh, Suddha Chaitanya, uh, Anadi Ananta Akanda Satchidananda that Bhagavan speaks about. So that is what we actually are. We are not aware of ourselves as such, because instead of looking at ourselves, we're looking outward. So we need to be willing to look back within. And for that, Supreme love is necessary because we we have to in order to know what we actually are we need to give up this ego entirely. So 
the, this bhakti is the very key to Bhagavan's um, teachings. Without bhakti, nobody can follow this path. What is meant by bhakti? That is, generally people associate bhakti with going to the temple, praying to God and all these things. All these things are good. But um, the true love for God is not going and praying for this or that. So long as we're asking God to give us this or that, that is karmiya bhakti. In karmiya bhakti, God is not... God is a means, not the end. We are, we are going to God, not for the sake of God himself, but for what we think we can get from God. So we pray to God for health and wealth and the well-being of our family and the removal of difficulties and everything. This is all karmiya bhakti. This is, this is, it is good. We all have to go through that stage of karmiya bhakti, but that karmiya bhakti has to mature into nishkarmiya bhakti. In nishkarmiya bhakti, we don't, want anything from God. We want God alone. It's for the love of God alone that we worship him. This is what Bhagavan um, talks about from verse 3 onwards in Upadesha Undia. Um, that is, in verse 2 he had said that the, um, the cause for falling in the great ocean of action is the Vasanas. And therefore, the, the uh, karma action will not give liberation. Then in verse 3, he says, however, though action won't give liberation, if we, if we do the action without desire, if it's nishkarmiya karma, done for the love of God, kartano kakam nishkarmiya karma, uh, nishkarmiya karma done for God, that implies for the love of God. In fact, in the Malayalam version of Upadesha Saram, he says, Ishwara Priti and I. That means for the love of God. In Tamil, he says, Kartanukakam, uh, done for God. So that Nishkarmiya Karma, we cannot do Nishkarmiya Karma except for the love of God. Because any action is motivated by some, um, some volition. There has to be some volitional motive for any action. So if we are not to act for the fulfillment of our desires, we can act only for the love of God. So love of God is the key to Nishkarmiya Karma. That is, Bhagavan doesn't take Nishkarmiya Karma to be a separate path. Nishkarmiya Karma is the preliminary stages of the path of bhakti. That is, when we, to express our love for God, we first express our love by action. So that's what Bhagavan is talking about from verse 3 onwards. So that nishkarmiya karma, done for the love of God, karate tiriti, uh, that is rectifying the mind or purifying the mind, aktu gati vari kam become. It will show the way to liberation. What does he mean by it will show the way to liberation? That is, action itself is not the way to liberation, but when the mind is purified, it will get the clarity to understand what is the correct path to liberation. The correct path to liberation is not doing, but just being. That is what Bhagavan goes on to explain here. Then in the, um, in the, in the next verse, he says, um, uh, Didumidu puje japamum dhyanam udulvak uh, ulum toril undipara we we vahum uh, on drill on drill on drew that means this is certain puja japra and dhyana are actions of body speech and mind one than one is superior that what he means by one than one is superior better than puja the action of the body is japa the action of the speech and better than japa which is an action of speech is uh, dhyana, which is action of mind, because the, the, the mind is obviously more subtle than the speech. The speech is more subtle than the body. So the, the actions that are done at a more subtle level have greater uh, efficacy. Efficacy in what? What is the aim of all these things? Purification of mind. So they are more... Uh, 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 Better than puja, japa is an effective means to purify mind. Better than uh, a japa, 
dhyana is an effective means to purify mind. Then he, in each, in each of the next three verses, he goes through each of these. In verse 5, he gives us a very broad definition of puja. That is, any action that we do, considering, a, that is, all the whole world is nothing but the form of God. Enuruyabam, the whole, all the that is the eight forms of God. The Ashtamurti is the five elements: the sun, moon, and jiva. This covers everything. That is all. The whole world is made up of the five elements. So, for, in other words, Bhagavan is saying, the whole world is nothing but God. Worshiping anything, considering it to be God is good worship of God. So he's not limiting puja just to ritualistic puja. That is also good. But we can also do puja by um, giving food to a hungry person, helping an injured animal, or um, possibly taking care of the environment, not um, not uh, polluting the environment, not causing, not being contributing to the global warming. These are all different ways in which if we do it with the attitude that this whole world is God um, and we, 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 we act with such reverence towards the world and towards all living beings in the world, that is good worship of God. Then in verse 6 he talks about the different types of japa. He says better than praising, japa is good. That they better than singing stotras, japa is good. Better than japa, in a loud voice, japa uh, uh, soft, uh, repeated softly within the mouth is good. Better than uh, japa done within the mouth, the uh, japa done by mind, the manisaka japa is beneficial. And this manisaka japa is a form of dhyana. And but we have to remember when he's saying each one is better than the other, he means it's more efficacious in purifying the mind, which is the purpose of all Nishkarmiya Karma, it's to purify the mind. Um, then in verse 7, he says, rather than meditation that is done interruptedly, meditation that is uninterrupted like a river or the falling of ghee is superior. Why? Because if we sit down to meditate on God, and when we are meditating on God, if we begin to think about other things, if we begin to think about problems in the family or problems in the office or how we're going to pay the bills or um, what we are... We're all, I mean, life is full of so many problems. There's so many things for us to think about. But if we, our aim is to think about God, we should think about God alone. Leave everything else. As Bhagavan said, however much burden you leave on God, he will bear all of it. So when we sit to meditate on God, we should meditate on God alone. We shouldn't think of other things. If we think of other things, that means we are more concerned about those other things than we are about God. So the, the, the extent to which our meditation on God is uninterrupted is the measure of the love that we have for him. That's why Bhagavan said this, uninterrupted meditation is better than interrupted meditation. So up to this point, Bhagavan is talking about actions, actions of uh, body, puja, actions of speech, japa, and action of mind, dhyana. But in the next verse, this is where he goes beyond the action. Because the, all, the purpose of all these nishkarmiya karmas is to purify the mind and show the way to liberation. The way, when the mind is purified, we will begin to recognize that the God we previously took to be outside ourselves cannot be just outside ourselves. He must be inside ourselves. If he is the infinite whole, how can we be anything other than him? So he exists most intimately, most closely, as our own being. He exists within us as I. He is that which is shining in us as I. So um, in, in verse 8, Bhagavan says, Rather than Anya Baba. Anya Baba means meditating on God as if he is something other than ourselves. Ananya Baba, meditating on him is not Abba than ourself. Anya means Abba, and Anya means not Abba. What is not Abba than ourself is only ourself. So, Ananya Baba, and he, 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 he clarifies what he means by Ananya Baba. Abba Nahamahum Ananya Babam. That is, Ananya Baba 
in which he is I. That is, having the clear understanding that God is that which is shining in our heart as I, then how should we meditate on God? We should meditate only on I. So this Ananya Bhava is Atman Vichara. It's turning our attention away from all um, as he says in verse 16, Veli vide engale vittu, manam tan oliuru ordale, uh, undipara, unme unicea mundipara. Leaving all external phenomena, all external vishayas, the mind knowing its own form of light, its own form of light is it means awareness, the light of a pure awareness, what he says in Sanskrit, chitva. Um, um, in Sanskrit, he says, Drisya varitum chittamatmanaha chitvadarshanam tatvadarshanam. That is, leaving all the, uh, or withdrawing from all the drisya, what is seen, the mind uh, knowing its own chitva, its own essential nature as, as awareness, that is seeing the reality. In Tamil, he says, unmayonichi. Uh, unmayonichi can either mean awareness of what is real or real awareness. It amounts to the same thing. So this is, the, this is what he means by Ananya Baba. Uh, we're drawing our mind from all, everything that is Anya, everything that is other than ourselves, and fixing our attention on ourselves. And he says, this is anatinum utamum. This is the best among all. What does he mean by the best among all? Among all the means, up till now he's been talking about purifying the mind. So among all the means to purify the mind, the most effective is to turn our attention back within and um, to, to face ourselves alone. And it, this is also best among all forms of bhakti, that is, among all the practices of bhakti, rather than, better than puja or japa or dhyana, turning our attention back within to meditate on ourself alone, Swarupa Dhyana, or Atma Chintana, or Ananya Bhava, or Atma Vichara, whatever we call it, it all amounts to the same. That is the best among all. It's the most efficacious means of purifying the mind. It's the most effective way to express our love for God. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, why? Because to the extent to which we attend to ourselves, we are thereby surrendering ourselves, because the ego subsides to the extent to which we look within. So that is the true surrender. As he says in verse 13, in, in, sorry, in the 13th paragraph of, uh, of Nana, um, Anma Chintane Tavira. Except Atma Chintana, except meditation on one's own self, Vera Chintane Kalamba Vadaku Satram Idam Kodamal, not giving even the slightest room to uh, rising of any other thought. So we need to attend to ourselves so keenly that no other thought arises. As Krishna says in, in the Gita, Atma Samstam Mana Kritva, fix the mind in Atma, na kinchitape chinte yet, do not think of anything else. So to the extent to which our attention is fixed on ourselves, uh, thereby we are uh, not giving room to the rising of any other thoughts. And by remaining thus, with uh, our mind fixed on ourselves, without giving room to any other thought, Atmanishta Paranai Irupte, thereby we remain as Atmanishta Paran, one who is firmly established as one as oneself. And Tanei uh, Isanuku uh, Alipadam, that alone is giving oneself to God. So Bhagavan's definition of surrender, of complete surrender, is attending to ourselves so keenly that we thereby give no room to the rising of any other thought. So this is the Ananya Bhava, the, th the meditation without any other, that is not allowing the attention to go to anything other than ourselves, that is the complete surrender. And that is, that is why Bhagavan said this is the best among all. And then in the next verse, uh, uh, um, verse 9 of Upadesha Undia, he begins by saying, Baba Balatinal, by the strength of Baba, by the strength of meditation. Which meditation? The Ananya Baba. By the implication, he doesn't mention Ananya Baba here, but the implication is, by the strength of that Ananya Baba, by the strength of that self attentiveness, Baba Natita Sabbaba Tirutale, being in the state of being, Sabbaba, which is bhavanatita, which is which transcends 
a bhavana. Bhavana here means meditation in the sense of mental activity. Because attending to ourself is not a mental activity. Attending to anything other than ourself is a mental activity. Attending to ourself is the subsidence of ego. So it's a cessation of mental activity. And thereby we remain in our, na- in our real state, sat bhava, the state of being. Uh, and being in that state of being by the strength of the self-attentiveness, what is that? That is parabhakti tattvam. That is the, the very nature or reality or true nature of supreme devotion. So this path of self-investigation that Bhagavan has taught us is itself the path of surrender and that itself is the supreme devotion. And but by attending to ourselves, we thereby subside back into the source from which we had risen. And be, um, being in the source from which we had risen, subsiding and being in the source from which we had risen, is itself uh, karma, bhakti, yoga and jnana. All the four paths are all included in this. As he says in the next verse, udita idatil odungi iratal. Uh, that is being subsiding in the place from which we've risen adu uh, karma uh, mum bhakti that is karma and bhakti that is yoga and jnana uh, as he says in the um, in the sanskrit version hritstale mana swastata kriya swastata that is the mind standing as itself in the heart ground that is heart ground here means the hritstale means the place from which we've risen by Subsiding in the place from which we risen, we remain swastata as we actually are. Um, and that is uh, uh, Kriya, Bhakti, Yoga and Bodha. Um, uh, that's all these three. That is certainly Nishitam. That is certainly all these three. So Bhagavan's path is the essence of all spiritual paths. It is the very culmination, the, 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 the climax, the... the, the um, the summit of the path of bhakti. So the ultimate path of bhakti is nothing but turning our attention within to attend to our own being and thereby to surrender ourselves entirely to Bhagavan. Om Namo Bhagavate Sri Arana Chala Ramanaya Sorry, I wanted also to talk about some verses of Akram Lai, but there wasn't time. And I, I don't know if we have time for any questions or whether I've used up all my the thirty minutes allotted to me. Bhagavan's teachings are so simple and so clear, it gives no room even for the rising of any questions. If we think about Bhagavan's teachings, there the mind subsides. It takes us right back to the source. Uh, it immerses us in the silence that is the real nature of Bhagavan and our own real nature. Yes, well, it's not me who's given this explanation, it's Bhagavan who's given this explanation. I'm just, I've just been pointing out what Bhagavan has said. Right, right. All salutations to Bhagavan. And Sadhu Om Sang, Unike Namaskaram, to you alone, to Bhagavan alone are Namaskarams. <laughs>